What a blessing. Mm. I think I just hit caps lock. Is that okay? Okay, that's not okay. So it's still, it's still, it's still counting. Okay. We're okay. Okay. I just hit caps lock. Okay, here we go. Okay. Holy Father, we just come in your presence. We're, we're always in your presence, Lord God, but we're acknowledging your presence here with us. Two or more gathered in your name, you are here in the midst. Father God, we just thank you that you, uh, you give us this opportunity to get together and to just minister your word. So I pray for open hearts, receptive minds, Father God, for people to just uh, to be new wineskins, to receive some new wine today. So Father, put a lock on my lips. I only speak what is true. Father God, use me mightily this morning, Father God. Let this be a message that comes from you, from heart to heart, your heart to mine, Father. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. amen. Let's do this. You ready? Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is the card, okay, for today's study. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you see the card? Okay. You can stop the video and you can look at this card. Okay. There it is. You can stop the video. You can look at this card. And that has everything on there. What that is, it is the promises of God. We are sustained by him. And we are kept by him. I'll show you the scriptures that say that. Many people believe that once you were saved by grace, but then we have to sustain this relationship with God by things that we have to do. But the Bible says that he sustains us and that he keeps us and that he preserves us blameless and that he, once he starts this work in us, he sees it to completion. So this is a God thing. You're his workmanship. And he works it in you to will and do what pleases him, and he sees the work to completion. So what a blessing that is. Okay, yeah. so you ready? So yeah. let's go. Let's get into this. Okay, let's go to Hebrews 1.3. Okay. I want to start out with something first before I get into this. I want to start out with something. For some of us, we question our salvation. We wonder if we're even saved. And I want to say that Jesus said at one point, he said, all those who receive him, Jesus... Okay, John wrote this. He said that all those who receive Jesus, in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, he said all those who receive Jesus, he gives the right to become children of God, and you are now born, not of blood, not of the will of man, but actually born of God. Okay, so if you would like to receive Jesus right now, because you're unsure, if you're even saved, even if you're a Christian, if you would like to receive a new birth, if you would like to receive Jesus Christ right now, you could say with me, just you could just say amen, because to say amen is is just to say, so be it, so it be, okay? And so to say amen to what I'm saying, to in agreement to what I say, okay? Lord Jesus, I believe that you are standing at the door of my heart and knocking, and you promised that you would come in if I would just let you in. So I open my heart to receive you right now. Your word says if I to, to, that all those who receive you, you give the right to become a child of God. So I receive you right now to the best of my ability. And what I can't give you, I, I invite you to take. So Father God, I re receive you into my heart. And I now have the right to be called a child of God. And I stand on that right now, Lord God. And I am now born of God. Just as Jesus was the only begotten of the Father, I too am born of God along with Jesus. Okay, so... You just received Jesus, okay? You agree with me, you say amen. Amen, right? Number two, Jesus said you, though you're evil, you know how to give good children, good, good gifts to your children, right? You, though you're evil, you know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more would your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to anyone who asks, okay? So let's just ask for the Holy Spirit right now, okay? I want you to have total confidence. You have received Jesus. You've asked for the Holy Spirit. And then we're going to go on to the next one. This is a three-part little thing here, okay? So first you receive Jesus. You're a child of God. You have that right. Okay, number two, you want the Holy Spirit? We ask him. Father God, you promised to give the Holy Spirit to anybody who asks. We're evil, and we give good gifts to our children. You, you are not evil. You are a good God, and you promised to give the Holy Spirit to anybody who asks you. So we now ask for your Holy Spirit, and we receive him. Just as the same way that we receive Jesus by faith, we receive your Holy Spirit by faith. Okay, so now you've received the Holy Spirit. Okay, you not only receive Jesus, we're born of God. Okay, now you have that right, okay, to be a child of God. You also receive the Holy Spirit just simply because you asked. Okay, and here's the third part. You ready for this? Okay, the Bible says that all those who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. 
okay? He says that if we just confess Christ as Lord and believe in our heart that he rose from the dead, you will be saved. It's a promise. We're going into the promises of God. These are promises, okay? So let's stand on this promise, and let's, let's just say, Father, Lord, we call upon your name. You say that anybody who calls upon your name will be saved. So we call on the name of Jesus, we confess you as Lord, and we believe in our hearts that you rose from the dead, and you promise salvation. So Father God, we've received Jesus. We're children of God. We have that right. Okay, we're born of God just like Jesus. We received your Holy Spirit, and now we are saved. We called upon the name of the Lord, and we are saved. There you go. You received Jesus. You have the Holy Spirit. And you, you're saved. There it is. Isn't that great? Amen. And say amen. Yeah, amen. Say amen. That means so let it be. So be it. That's what amen means. So be it. There you go. Amen. Thank you. And, and there's rejoicing in heaven over those sinners, the, you, the sinners that just repented. Rejoicing in heaven. God is so pleased to have you in his kingdom. Jesus said that don't, 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 don't fear, little flock. Yeah, it's, for it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Yeah, he said don't fear, little flock, for it is the Father's good pleasure to just give you the kingdom. A gift. What a blessing. Amen. Isn't that good news? Yep. What a message. Okay, so let's get serious. Okay, Hebrews, so here Hebrews we go. 1, Hebrews, Hebrews 1, 3. I'm going to show you that he sustains us. People think that we're saved by grace, but then now that we're, we're saved, we, we stay in by our rule keeping and how well we confess our sins or how much we cry for mercy. And somehow we have to sustain this relationship by God. By now we have to keep the rules to stay, to sustain it. Okay, but that's not what the scriptures teach. Okay, Jesus sustains us by the power of his word, right? Not your word. You're not your many confessions, <laughs> right? right? It's not how well we, in our word, and when we confess, it's the power of our word that sustains us. No, it's the power of his word. Watch this. <laughs> it's heavy, huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Hebrews chapter 2, uh, ch ch Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2. Okay. Uh, is that what it said? No, verse 3. Oh, verse 3. Okay, verse 3. Oh, okay. Um, it's talking about the sun. Who being the brightness, okay, let me start at two. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. Has in these God, God in the, has in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, by whom he made the worlds. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and, and, and upholding all things by the power of his word. Okay. This, the King James is upholding. The NIV says sustaining mm. all things things okay you look up the word sustain and uphold is one of the words that, that define it mm -hmm. okay so he's sustaining all things that includes you and me right let, let me give you a picture god by the power of his word he created everything he said let there be light and it was light it was by the power of his word he just said it and it was right that's the power of god's word mm -hmm. He was able to create it, but the same one who created it also sustains everything as well by the power of his word as well. That's what he's saying here. Not only did he create by the power of his word, but he also sustains all things by the power of his word. Okay? Well, you in Christ, the Bible says you are a new creation. Amen. He created you brand new. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. And that's why it says all things are new, old things have passed away, because God is sustaining you. Just like he created you, new person. He is sustaining you with new life. Okay? Isn't that great? Amen. So, and I'm going to prove it to you. Watch this. Let's go to the next one. 2 Peter 1.4. I'm going to prove that. Right? So that said two amazing things. It says Jesus is the expressed image of God's very nature. Right? Express image of his, of his nature, of God's nature. Right? Mm -hmm. Jesus is that expression of his divine nature. Right? You know what it said? How did it say it? Express image of his person. Express image of his person. Meaning that whatever God is like, if God was a person, Jesus expressed image of that person. Yes. Right? And God right. is a person just without a body. Right. Right? He is a him. Yeah. We call him dad. Right. We, right? Right. So he is a person just without a body like we have. Mm -hmm. You know, just like demons are persons they have you know without bodies you know so angels are 
persons without bodies. Okay, so you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, what did I say? Uh, Second Peter uh, one three. Oh, you are good. You. Is that what I said? Oh, Second Peter. Second Peter. I'm looking at First Peter. Come on. What? What did I say? One three. One three. Yeah. Okay, here it goes. As His divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. I wanted four. What did I? Okay. Yeah, it's the verse after it. But you want to start at three, don't you? Yeah, but for some reason I didn't put, I hope she puts the right one up there on the screen oh, today. Oh, okay. Oh. What did I put? Let me, can, can I check real quick? I, want to, I don't know sure. why I put that, I sure. put the wrong verse there. I hope oh. she puts the right thing on the screen. Oh, wow, okay. Because that's important. Okay, don't go anywhere. I want to make sure, because this is important. I want to see, what did I put on this? Yeah, I put Hebrews 1, 3. Oh, it is 1, 4. I do have 1, 4. Okay. Okay, good. Boy. Okay. So, we'll, but we'll start at 1, 3. As his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Right? Mm -hmm. Just like he said, he sustains all things. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. By his divine power, he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. So one thing, if you want to, like the Bible says, to grow in the grace, Peter says at the end of 2 Peter, he says to grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So if you're growing in the knowledge of Jesus Christ, one thing you should know is that he's already given me everything I need pertaining to a life, godly life. Well, he already good. gave yeah, it to me. If you're really it. growing in his yeah. knowledge of him, then that's something you should know. Yeah, you should be chasing after something you, you already have. Come on. Yeah. He says, by which we have been given us exceedingly great and precious promises that by these you may be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world. Okay? Now, two, ama two amazing things there. Okay? Number one, it's by his promises. Why is God giving us promises? Why does God make promises? Because he wants us to see that he's faithful, that he keeps his promises. To put, give you something to put your faith in. Right, right. Okay. Right? Well, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And he's making promises so you can trust in the promise. Yeah, I mean, if I make a promise to you, I want you to trust in the promise. Yeah, the exercise of faith. Right? Well, that makes sense. See, that's why he's making promises so you can put your faith in them. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Okay, so that's important. Okay, and he says, by these you are partakers of divine nature. God's promises are that we are, that we are partakers of his divine nature, right? Mm -hmm. He says he'll accept you in the beloved. You're accepted in the beloved, right? right. He says you're sealed by the Holy Spirit, and he's your guarantee of your inheritance, mm -hmm. right? These are promises. Let me just say it like this. God doesn't, the Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie, okay? So that means anything he says you can take as a promise, right? If God is saying it, it's a new covenant message, how he's dealing with you under the, the new covenant of grace, under this dispensation of grace, mm -hmm. you could take it to the hills. Right? Okay. Right? Right. He, and he says, he says, by these he makes you partaker of his divine nature. Dude, you're a partaker of his divine nature. You know, the Bible says that in Christ is the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him. Mm -hmm. So he's the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That's the Father, Son, Holy Spirit was all in Christ. And he says, you are complete in him. Mm -hmm. A partaker of his divine nature. Amen. Right? Yeah. But this is key. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Okay? He says having escaped, meaning you've already escaped the corruption that is in the world. How is that? Is it by something that you do? Is it because I just stopped sinning altogether and I never sin anymore? I never lust? Huh? He says the corruption is in the world through lust. Does that mean I, I never lust? I've escaped that corruption that can come through that? Huh? Hmm. Is it something that you do? Oh, boy. You're not ready for this. You ready? Let's see, let's see it. Go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter. 1 Peter 1, 3. How do we escape the corruption that is in the world? Why is he saying that we have already escaped the corruption that is in the world? Well, you're a partaker of his divine nature, right? Oh, okay. Can God ever sin? No. No. You're one with Christ in the Spirit. Can the Holy Spirit ever sin? Never. No. Did Jesus ever sin? No. No. And you, you're part of that triune God, the Godhead. You're complete in him. You're part of that triune Godhead. Therefore, 
you never sin either who you are in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Right? Because right. you're joined right. to him. Right. You're one spirit with him. Amen. Right? Yeah. I'm going to prove it. Okay. You ready? Yep. This is how you escape the corruption that is in the world. Verse 23, 1 Peter 1, 23. Having been born again, that's how you escape. You ready? Mm -hmm. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed through the word of God. Again, it's through his word. Just like he sustains all things by the power of his word. Here he says you are born of incorruptible seed through the word of God. Again, you got to trust in his promises. Mm -hmm. If this is what he says, you, you got your yeah. your partake of his divine nature. That would have to be an incorruptible nature, mm -hmm. right? right? Then you're mm -hmm. new, you're new creature. That means you have a whole new nature. Old things have passed away. Old things have passed away. All things are new. You are now a partaker of God's divine nature. You're one spirit with Christ, right? You're accepted in the beloved. You're complete in Christ. You're hid with Christ in God. You're the righteousness of God. You nothing separates you from the love of God. You are just you're in, right? Mm -hmm. Incorruptible. When you realize that you are in Christ, yeah. you are now in corruptible. You're born of incorruptible seed. We just read that you've escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. You're not there anymore, Dylan. Amen. Okay? Where are you? Are you in sin? In Christ. You're in Christ. If you're in sin, you're not in Christ. Right, right. If you're in Christ, you're not in sin. Right. Right? So 1 Corinthians chapter 15 says that. It says that um, it says if Jesus has not risen from the dead, you'd still be in your sins. Mm -hmm. But he did rise from the dead. So you're not in your sins. You're in Christ. Amen. <sighs> and therefore you are incorruptible. He's sustaining you. I'm going to prove it again. We'll keep going. Watch this. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, 24. 1 First, First Thessalonians 5, 23. You've escaped the corruption that is in the world. You are incorruptible. He's sustaining you. This is what we were looking at, right? Mm -hmm. don't, be, don't be scared. You got it right here. Easy. Gosh. Now, may the God of peace himself sanctify you Halfway. Is that what it says? Nope. Holy. You know, most of the way? Holy. Okay. He'll do his part, and now you do your part? Huh? Nope. Is that what it says? Nope. No. It says, may the God himself, the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. He starts it. He finishes it. Amen. He who begun a good work in you, he sees it to completion. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. Are you feeling me? You see, yeah. like how I put those scriptures together? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless, preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. He's doing this for you. Mm -hmm. He is preserving you blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sounds kind of like, sounds like you've escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you're born of an incorruptible seed. If he's preserving you blameless, right, right. sounds pretty incorruptible. Uh -huh. <laughs> God, are you feeling me? Yes. This isn't being taught. No. And it's sad because it's Bible. This is, re why am I doing it this way? Because I'm matching them up. This is what's called the preponderance of evidence. Okay, this is what's the proof of scripture of that you've got to pile it all up together so you get the good picture instead of pulling out these singular verses that seem to be saying something else. Don't go with what is the majority of the scriptures that are all saying the same thing in so many different ways. It's not funny. That's what I'm doing. I'm piling this up. So all these scriptures, he sustains all things, so you're sustained by him. He, you've escaped, you're a partake of his divine nature. And, and you've escaped the corruption of the world. Mm -hmm. You're born of an incorruptible seed, right? Right, right. He's, he's the one who's, who's going to um, uh, sanctify you completely himself. And, and he also is the one who's going to preserve you blameless until the coming of the Lord. And he who is faithful, he's the one who's going to do it. Amen. Are you feeling me? See how I just add all that up together? Mm -hmm. <sighs> That's what you got to do, man. 
And watch this, Titus 3, 4. Titus 3. Four through seven. You with me? Yep. Don't be as scared. Okay. Now this removes all of this, okay, because people like to throw in works in there where you got to do works. Well, the Bible says that we are his workmanship, created in Christ unto good works. So you see what has to come first. Okay, the works come from you're incorruptible. You're without blame. He's going to preserve you blameless. Mm. Okay. He's sanctifying you completely. Okay. Right. It, it, you're already a partaker of his divine nature. Okay. The good works come from this. Okay. They don't, you don't do works to get this. Oh, of course not. Yeah. Uh, absolutely not. Yeah, you can't do it. Okay. Yeah. Your good works will never get, do enough to be able to get sinless perfection, incorruptibility. You know, your good works don't do that. The work of the cross and his risen resurrection life in you is what gets that. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. um, we'll start at verse 4. But when the kindness, what did I say? Yeah, 4 through 7, yeah, right? Yeah, Titus 3, 4 through But 7. when the kindness of the love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared. Now, that's heavy. He says, but when the, when the kindness and the love of God, our Savior, he calls God, he calls G, um, the Savior God. Amen. Right there, he's calling Jesus Christ as our Savior, and he's calling him God right there. Amen. Yes, people, right? People uh, say it's nowhere in the Bible that Jesus is, says that Jesus is God, but it's all over the place. It is. Well, we just saw a minute yeah. ago that if Jesus is the express image of his the God's person. person. Yeah, right. You want to know what God is like? It's Look at Jesus. The, it's all over the place. There's God. Yeah, he's yeah. Emmanuel, God with us. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> people are these weird, these weird <laughs> statements, and they don't even read the Bible. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. You've seen me, you've seen the Father. You know, yeah. it's everywhere, just like with these scriptures I'm showing you. It, it's saturated in your Bible that mm. he is the divine nature of God and that we are partakers of that divine nature. Right? Right, right. But when the kindness of the love of God, our Savior, toward man appeared, not by, okay, listen to this, not by the works of righteousness which we have done. You know what that means? It has nothing to do with what I do. Mm -hmm. any good deeds, any obedience, any acts of righteousness whatsoever, okay, I've been saved, right? Mm -hmm. Not by works of righteousness, works of righteousness which we have done, which we have, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. You are saved because of God's mercy. God had sympathy toward you. The Bible says he sympathizes with our weakness, Amen. right? Amen. He says his grace is sufficient for your weakness. Amen. So God had sympathy for your weakness because you are weak. The Bible says, let the weak say I'm strong, Amen. right? Yeah. So he, that's what he wants you to say, knowing who lives in you, knowing the power of God in you now. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Keep your joy. Don't let people steal it, okay. right? There are messages yeah. that will steal your joy. You want to stay strong in the Lord? To keep your joy. Yeah. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is the joy of the Lord. Right? Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. So let's go. Okay. okay. Not by righteous works which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. By, he's going to tell you how this is done. By the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. This is the power of the Holy Spirit in you. Mm -hmm. This is a spiritual thing. That's why you don't take, that's why you don't see it. That's mm -hmm. why you don't think it. It's a spiritual thing. It's washing. It's something going on in your spirit. Spiritual thing. Right? Right. Whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Right? This is a faithful saying, and these things I want to affirm constantly, that those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. So he says this good works is going to come out of your faith in God. Right? Yeah, that's good. That's good. You right? Yeah. Yeah. These things are good and profitable to men. Okay? But he's saying that these good works to maintain is going to come out of your faith in God. Amen. Let's get, right? the, let's get the horse before the cart. Yes. Yeah. Let's get the root before the fruit. Heavy. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is good. Okay? Uh, go to John 14.6. I listened to that video last week where I was talking about um, uh, mm -hmm. 
grace bashers beware. Oh, yeah. And even though I had a cold, yeah. the message was awesome. I thought it was really good. Mm -hmm. I wanted to tell you to put a cross next to it, to, you know, t to emphasize that's a good one. Yeah. But then I, I just, it's, I'm debating it because I was so nasal congested. I was sick, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, but, think about but, it, yeah. But the message. Yeah, it's a good message. It yeah. is. It's yeah. really good. Yeah. I thought it turned out pretty good. I didn't think it was that good because I was sick at the time. I didn't want to watch it. I went out half a week without even watching it because I didn't think it was any good. But then when I finally watched it, I, I thought, wow, that was, message is great. Isn't it great? Yeah. You know, that's because the Holy Spirit's involved. I could be sick. Holy, Holy Spirit's never sick. That's right. Come on. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> John 14, 6. You ready? I'm ready. You're, you're there already. already Come ready. on. Cut yeah. it out. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Let's hear it. Nice and loud. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Okay. So he says, no one comes to the Father except by me. Right? Right. When he says, I am the way, the truth, and life, I believe he's saying, I am the way to the Father. Yeah. I am the truth about the Father. I am the life of the Father. Amen. Okay? Um, without the way, there is there's no, going. no going. Without the truth, there's no knowing. There's no knowing. Without the life, there is no there's growing. no growing. Good yeah. job. You yeah. remember yeah. that, yeah. huh? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Isn't that great? Yep. Okay. No one comes to the Father except through me. Okay, listen. Remember that. No one comes to the Father except by Him. Watch this. Are you coming to God through Him? Absolutely. Are you coming to God through Him? You through Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except by Him. Are you coming to Him? Through Jesus. Huh? You're yes. coming through Jesus. Yes. Okay. Yes. Didn't we walk through that earlier? We did uh, that without the receiving yeah. Jesus, yeah. receiving yeah. the Holy Spirit, knowing receiving that you're saved. Yeah. Right? right. We walked through that. Okay. You're coming to the Father through Jesus now. Okay? Mm -hmm. The Bible says you can come boldly through his blood into the holiest place. Amen. Isn't that great? Yeah. It says that in Hebrews chapter uh, 10, verse uh, 4, uh, first, uh, Hebrews 10, 19. 10, 19. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, I think I have that in here. But, uh, okay, so what did I say? Go to, um, what was the next one? You didn't say anything. Oh, come on. Hebrews 7, 25. Remember I asked you, are you coming to God through Jesus? Yeah. you got to match these up together. Because if that's you, you got to look at this. Okay. See, I'm trying to help you feel comfortable where you're at with God from here on through eternity. Amen. That doesn't waver. You're not righteous and then you sinned and you're unrighteous and you got to get re-righteous. And that is not true. That's why would God give you his righteousness for your faith if you're just going to be unrighteous every time you sin? It doesn't make any sense. What is the point of him giving you his righteousness if you're just going to be unrighteous every time you sin, and there's something you have to do to get re-righteous. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make any sense, right? Right. right. Well, people have different opinions on what you have to do. Some people say you got to confess your sins. Some people say you got to cry for mercy. Other people say you got to repent, repent, repent. You know, all these things that people say you got to do to get back into, you know, God's good graces, right? Mm -hmm. We're swimming in grace. Amen. The Bible says where your sin abounds, his grace abounds much more, Right. Right. We have superabounding grace. The Bible mm -hmm. says we're supposed to we're reign in life by the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. You have an abundance of grace. Why are you why do you think that you're 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 drifting? Mm -hmm. We don't drift. No. You're incorruptible seed. Amen. Right? There's yeah. no drifting. Right, right. Right? You're right. sustained by him. Right? Mm -hmm. He's preserving you blameless until the coming of our Lord. There's no drifting. James says we all stumble in many ways. You know? So you stumble but you're not drifting from who you are in Christ. It's, it's positional. It's, it's, it's identity. It's, it's your new man. That old man, you put him off. That's not you anymore. You put on the new man, which is created after God in righteousness and true holiness. That's you. So how does, that dri how does this unrighteousness come into that program? If you are created by God after himself in righteousness and true holiness, it says that in, in uh, Ephesians chapter 4, within... Where is this unrighteous every time? He says he's being merciful to your unrighteousness anyways, right? Okay, come on. Let's, let's go. Mm -hmm. So I ask you, are you coming to God through Jesus? Yes. Okay. Hebrews 7.25. Therefore, he is able to save to the uttermost. Help me out. What does that mean, uttermost? Uh, uppermost. Upper. Uh, that's good. Uppermost. Yeah. Completely. Completely. 100%. Through right. the roof, all that upper most, the most most upper would be the highest possible position. He says you're saved there. 
-hmm. That's where you're, you're saved completely, 100%. Per, okay, he says, therefore he is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God by him. Remember, I asked you, are you coming to God? He said, nobody comes to Father except by me. Mm -hmm. And I asked you, are you coming to God through him? Well, then you're saved to the uttermost Amen. because you're coming to God by him. Seen, now I love the word seen because he wants you to put on your little spiritual eyeglasses and see this. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Seen, he ever lives to make intercession for you. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. You need to put on your little spiritual eyeglass and see Jesus always seated at the right hand of the Father making intercession on your behalf. Right? Mm -hmm. He's, he didn't stop at the cross. Amen. When he went to the cross, he, 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 he suffered on behalf of the whole world. The Bible says he was the Lamb of God taking away the sins of the whole world. He did that. Mm -hmm. And when, it, when, you, when you believe that, it applied to you. It, you benefit from it when you believe. Otherwise, there's no benefit. Otherwise, the, um, the, your faith is uh, frustrated. Yeah, your faith is futile. Yeah, it, it, yeah. it doesn't It doesn't, it doesn't do any you. good. Yeah. Because you're acting like you didn't rise from the dead. It's like if I, if I said, you know, I'm going to give you $100,000 if you don't um, go there, drive there, and, and, and pick up the $100,000 then you're, 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 you know, that's not considered a, a work, you driving there. It's just your belief that you, that you really have the $100,000 you're going to give me. Because if you even say, I'm not going to give you the $100,000, you can't, I can't sue you. You know, it's not, it's not like, uh, it's a, uh, you know, I mean, it, the promise that you give me $100,000, it's a, it's a gift. And my driving there is not my works to try to get that $100,000. So my faith isn't frustrated if I, it's frustrated if I don't believe, if I stay in bed and say, ah, it's not going to happen, you know. Then yeah. It's frustrated, you know. It, it's not profiting. Well, well, the key thing he's saying here is that he wants you to see that he always lives to intercede for you. He didn't stop at the cross. Amen, amen. Right? Yeah. That's why he died. He died for our sins, but he was raised for our justification, the Bible says. Right. Okay. Both. So yeah. he died for your sins. Okay, so that was all there was to it. Well, then, dude, I could see why you're worried about the next time you sin. But he was raised for your justification so you could be declared not guilty, no charges. The Bible says he will not bring a charge against you. Um, uh, uh, Romans 4, chapter, verse 8, uh, David, uh, there's a quote from David that says that blessed is the man whom the Lord will not impute your sins. That's future tense. Future sense. He yeah. will not impute your sins. He was Christ not imputing them. He will not impute them. He is imputing his righteousness. He was in Christ becoming sin for you. Okay, he's not imputing your sin. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you are secure in Christ. This is eternal security. We believe that here at this church. Okay? And people try to throw stones at that, you know, to take away their, your joy in just knowing you're secure in Christ. Mm -hmm. And you need to know that he's sustaining you. He's preserving you blameless. You are partaker of his divine nature, that, that he's, you're saved to the uttermost, and that he always lives to intercede on your behalf. Isn't that great? Yeah. It even says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, that I write this so you don't sin, but if you do, you have an advocate, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He's the, he's the perpetration for your sins, and not only yours, but the whole world, right? But it says that even if you sin, you have an advocate. What is an advocate doing? interceding on your behalf. Amen. That's what he means by he's interceding, always interceding for you. You always have an advocate, even if you sin. You need to know that, especially if you sin, so you stay secure in Christ. Amen. Yeah. Isn't that good? You need, you need that. It's your security. That's right. Yeah. I mean, that's what you see in the, all the script, all the writers of the New Testament, okay? You see that in Colossians, Ephesians, Romans, Hebrews. Yeah, in all these letters, Romans, you have... Uh, 11 chapters before he goes into chapter 12 and goes into behavior, okay? You have in Hebrews, you got 11 chapters and until chapter 12 he goes into behavior, okay? He, all these says, before that he's going through the, uh, the, the, hor the horizontal indicatives, right? No, it's the, ver uh, the, vertical, the vertical indicatives. indicatives. Vertical indicatives upward toward you yeah. and God, okay? For 11 chapters in Hebrews, it's vertical indicative until chapter 12, then it's horizontal Imperative. imperatives, Yeah. right? Right, yeah, you're right. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. Words and imperatives. Yeah. You see that in Hebrews, 11 chapters until 12, behavior. Romans, 11 chapters, and then 12, behavior. Ephesians, three it's, it's three chapters, right? And then the, 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 the second half of Ephesians, he goes into behavior, right? You see in the Colossians, it's all about indicative, about uh, your horizontal um, indicatives. It's just, man, it's 
it's huge. But that's how they write. That you w make sure you keep the the horse before the cart. Yeah, you the need to know the behavior. Right. Don't even think behavior until you know identity. Once you know identity, then it's a lot easier to stay clean because you're going to see you're already clean. I'm already incorruptible. I'm already saved to the uttermost. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. I'm right. already sustained by God. Right? By his powerful word. Uh, the word he's, of already, power. he's already yeah. sanctifying me completely. He's already preserving me blameless. Okay, so now I can go a lot easier to, get, to stay clean if I'm already clean than trying to get clean because I'm so filthy. Instead mm -hmm. of crying out to God, how unworthy, I'm oh, so unworthy, oh, Father, please forgive me. You're acting like you never went to the cross and suffered in your place. You know, mm -hmm. you're, you're approaching God in the flesh. The Bible says we're supposed to worship him in the spirit. New creature, right? Mm -hmm. Identified with Christ, right? <laughs> Are you seriously, <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay, so let's go. So it says that he always lives to intercede for us. Hebrews 7.25 says that he always lives. We need to see that he always lives to intercede for us. Okay, let's get a picture of what that looks like. What does it look like for him to intercede for us? You want to get a picture? Mm -hmm. Here it goes, Hebrews 9.24. This is in Hebrews 2. This is two chapters later. 924 tells you, gives you a picture of him always interceding for you. You ready? Mm -hmm. For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. That's a picture of his intercession. That's what he's doing. He is now appearing before God for you. Amen. Isn't that what an advocate does? He says if we sin, we have an advocate. Isn't that what an advocate is? Like a lawyer who defends you? Mm -hmm. Who appears before the judge for you? Yeah. That's what an advocate does. That's mm -hmm. what a lawyer does. Right. And that's what Jesus is saying. I always do that for you. I'm always appearing before God on your behalf. Right? Mm -hmm. Presenting himself as the one who became sin for you. Right? Right. Presenting you as being the righteousness of God in him. That's what it says mm -hmm. in in uh in Second Corinthians chapter five, verse twenty one. Right? Right. That's what, what, it's what he, that's why he's presenting himself on your behalf. He became sin for you, and you are now righteous in him. <sighs> oh, my gosh, that's good news. Okay, so go to Romans 8.24. We're staying on the subject of interceding. Romans 8.24. Because he's interceding for you. That's not just one verse, okay? That's not just a singular verse. That's not just him saying that he's your advocate in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. That's not him in Hebrews chapter 7, 20, 25, saying that he always lives to intercede for you. That's not just those few verses. This is repeated, and that's why you can take this to the bank, mm -hmm. because you know it's confirmed in Scripture, mm -hmm. right? Right. <sighs> Gosh, it's good news. What did I say? Romans 8, 24. Gosh. That's right. Romans 8, 34 or 24? 8, we'll find 34. out right now. I think it's 34. What did I say? 8, 24. 24, I'm sorry. Maybe I got it, maybe I put that wrong. I think it's 34. You're right, it is. Why did I say 24? Oh my gosh, that's not good. Oh well, that's okay, don't worry about that. Okay, so you ready? Yes. Who is he that condemns? Paul is asking you. Who's going to condemn you, Dylan? The devil. Who is he that's going to condemn you? That's good. That's good. That's the, only one that can the devil will condemn you. The, the Bible says the law is a ministry of condemnation, so yeah. the devil will try and put you under the law so you could put you under condemnation. He mm -hmm. wants to condemn you, and he'll use the law to do it. And unsafe people. And people today, yeah. most Christians want to put you back under the law. They're, they're doing the work of the devil. Yeah. And they're putting you under condemnation. Unsafe un people would, will try to accuse you too, you know, un un uh, people that are on the way to hell. They'll, they'll try to well, yeah, because they're all ears for the devil. They're, they're not they're, even they're, attentive to the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you know, they're, if they're, they're unsaved, they're, they don't yeah. have the Holy Spirit. They're yeah. not being led by Him. They don't have they no ear you, for they Him. Want to drag you down? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yeah. And so do people who have misunderstanding of what God's grace. You know, they they just they don't get it. Mm -hmm. they, they they think you need rules. They think you need p threats of punishment to live godly. Mm -hmm. They can't understand. They can't relate to what it really what to this. Message of pure grace. They can't relate to that. Mm -hmm. They don't understand the power of the Holy Spirit working in a true believer. They don't, they don't get it. You know, and they never experience that, the power of the Holy Spirit working in a true believer. They never get to experience that because they're, they're perverting the gospel with, with law-based messages, mm -hmm. you know. So they never inject to enjoy the freedom that we have in Christ. 
Right. Right? Yeah. The Bible says the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Right? Mm -hmm. So, okay. So, verse 34. Who is he that condemns? Is Christ, uh, who is he who condemns? Is Christ who died and furthermore also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for you? Like he said, he always lives to intercede for you. He says he's right now at the right hand of Father making intercession for you. He's appearing before God for us. Amen. Right? Amen. Therefore, he wants you to see, Dylan, you are saved 100%. That doesn't diminish. Amen. Because of sin in your life. People think that this is going to make people, just giving people license to sin. No, it doesn't. I've broken free from more addictions, more, I've been freed Some from more demons. Yeah. Some people it does and others it doesn't. You know, it depends huh? on what side. Some people use it as a license to sin, but. Well, Ju people, Judas did. Judas did, yeah. Yeah, there's some Judas was one of, one of the 12 disciples. Yeah. Okay. Right. Was there with Jesus, seeing miracles, hearing his messages, you know, probably like the others had left everything to follow him, you know, and, and he was part of the program. But the whole time he was dipping in the money bag. Right. He eventually betrayed Jesus. He never jumped in with both feet. John did. You know, John, John he used it as a license to be able to, to yeah. dip into the money bag. Right, he right. did dip in the money bag. He did it, use it for, to, for his own means. But then John right? is the positive uh, response to the gospel. John said, I'm the disciple whom Jesus loved. Yeah, well, I think they all were, except for, for Judas. Yeah. John I, I think all of them. I think all the other 11 were pretty, were jumping in with both feet. Yeah, that's what, okay? we, that's what God wants. We don't have yeah. anything to say different. Right, right, right. But we have much to say about Judas where he did apparently. So there's one out of 12 of Jesus' disciples, mm -hmm. the close inner circle of disciples that he had, because he had more disciples yeah, than just the, the 12. Right, right, right. He, 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 John 666, as many of his disciples left when he said some things, right. it's as many of them left. So, uh, But the 12 were still there. So he had a lot more disciples. One time he sent out the 70, another time he sent out the 12. Mm -hmm. So he had a lot of disciples, but... But but Judas, he never jumped in with both feet. No, so, he was always, sure. he was always uh, out and outside. The key thing is we should not withhold the truth for fear of what somebody might do with it. Right, right. People put you under a fear of telling this truth, okay, that you're saved to the uttermost, you're, mm -hmm. you're incorruptible, okay, right? What is in Scripture? Right. People have you afraid of telling these truths for fear of the stone throwers that, that, that are going to tell you that, that you're giving people a license to sin. No, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm encouraging you to, to just trust God and let yeah. his spirit work in you. Yeah. If somebody does that, then they have a work understanding. Yeah. yeah. So is it possible that somebody could take it as license? Sure, they can, but that's not what we're teaching. We're not teaching grace as licentiousness. That's no. not what we're teaching. No, we don't teach that. Yet. No. Yeah. But that's what they accuse us of. Right, right. You know? Oh, yeah. So we're going to Romans. Uh, eight. We did that eight thirty four. Yeah. So you know that he's interceding for us. Okay. First Corinthians six seventeen. First Corinthians six seventeen. How are we doing on time? Fifteen minutes. Okay. We can maybe get through these. Okay. Okay. What does it say? It says, "But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit." Okay. He who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe that's why you're incorruptible. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why he says in 1 John that we, as he is, so are you in this world. Because you really are one spirit with Christ. Amen. Amen. Right? Yeah. As he is, so are you. In this world, right now, you are one with Christ. Mm -hmm. You're robed with his righteousness. That's why you're incorruptible. Right? Mm -hmm. So... You're one with him. Okay, right? Go to 1 John 4.17. We've got to get through these. We're going to start going fast. Okay. 1 John 4.17. I want to get through all of these if I can. 1 John 4.17. Got it. Go ahead. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. What was that? 1 John 4.17? Yep. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, how, uh, 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 say it again. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, 
so are we in this world. Okay, so he's saying that, that we can have boldness in any day of judgment. Boldness? Mm -hmm. is, is there any judgment in the future? I can have a boldness at that time. Right. That means no fear, okay? No, oh, no, I'm, I'm facing the judge. The boldness, no fear. Why? He mm -hmm. tells you why. Because you're one spirit with Christ. Amen. Right? Yeah. Because you're a partaker of his divine nature. Amen. Because as he Amen. is, so are you in this world. That's why. Right, right. No fear of judgment. Amen. I'm preserved blameless. Right? Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. So there it is. Okay, so it'll go to Hebrews 4.15. Got it. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness. Okay, but it was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. So what that's saying is we do have a high priest who can sympathize with our weakness. Mm -hmm. Right? It's just worded kind of funny. It says we don't have a high priest who can't. What he's saying is we do have a high priest who can. He's right, right. So you need to know God sympathizes with your weakness. Dylan, do you have any weaknesses? Yeah. Do you have any areas where you struggle with sin, temptations? Yeah. The devil seems to get his little hooks in me yeah. again and again. Yep. Does that happen? Yep. It does. Yep. That's why James says we all stumble in many ways because it happens. Right. Okay. If you're honest. Right, okay. Right, super right. religious people have a hard time being honest. Yeah, okay, we're not super religious, okay? No, we're, 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 we're in a relationship. We're not even about religion. We're about relationship. We're, we're, we're secure in Christ. God joined me unto himself. I am a partaker of his divine nature. Okay, bam. Ready? Right. And so God sympathizes with your weakness. He knows. That God so loved the whole world that he gave his only begotten son that if anybody would believe on him, they won't perish but have eternal life. He sympathizes with the whole world and all of our weaknesses. Right. Right? Yeah. And the next verse is a good clincher. Yeah. How, what does it say? There, let us therefore come okay, boldly. Now, see, I like, to tie, I like to expound on certain things. He says, let us therefore. Why is there a therefore? Because we have a high priest that can sympathize with our weakness. Because he sympathizes with your weakness. He's not going to hammer away at you on account of it. Yeah. He's sympathetic toward it. The opposite of condemning, judging, Right? right? Right, right, right. The opposite, sympathizing with your weakness. Amen. Therefore, go ahead. Therefore, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace. Not judgment. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. You know what that means? Anytime you need mercy and grace, come and get it. It's, it's free gift. Boldly yeah. come and get it. No fear. Don't be nervous. Boldly. Put your chest out, head high. No, no fear. Okay, come to a, because you're approaching a throne of grace, not judgment. Mm -hmm. I'm, he's now, therefore, because he sympathizes with your weakness, therefore, I'm inviting you to come boldly to a throne of grace, not judgment, to receive mercy and grace whenever you need it. Amen. Amen. Whew. But you notice that what's a common element? Boldness. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. Okay. 1017. Hebrews. Say in Hebrews. 1017. Got it. Wait, wait. Did I say to Hebrews? 10, yeah, 17 through 19. God adds, he says, then he adds, and their sins, their lawless deeds, I will remember no more. You know mm -hmm. what that means? Some people think that means that he's going to forget your sins. I've read that in books. Oh, yeah. God yeah. forgets your sins. He throws your sins into the sea of forgetfulness. He forget. He doesn't forget. He's not some forgetful God. He's saying he will remember them no more. That's a choice. That's a, that's, he has freedom of choice, and he's choosing not to think about your sin. Okay, mm -hmm. he will remember them no more. Now, where there is remission of these sins, there is no longer an offering for your sin, right? Mm -hmm. So there's nothing you can do to fix the sin problem. That's what he means. There's no more offering. At that time, the way they fixed their sin, their, their pro sin problem, was they made offerings. They mm -hmm. killed animals. They shed blood, animal blood. Okay, but he's but but now we have the offering of Jesus Christ, right? And so now that there is remission of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. Nothing you can do to fix the sin problem. It's been fixed, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. There Again, therefore, see, whenever he starts talking about a boldness, mm -hmm. he throws in a therefore. Be now that there's no, nothing you can do, no offering you can do for sin, okay? Now that he's remembering your sins no more, mm -hmm. therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus. He's inviting you to come into the holiest place through his blood. Mm -hmm. Red carpet to God. Boldness, no fear. Right? 
right. knowing that he's not even thinking about your sin. I'm Amen. choosing not even to remember it. Amen. Isn't that great? Yeah. Good news. So maybe you're not in your sins. Yeah. He's not, think he's not thinking about it. Why are you? Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. That's heavy. Yep. Ephesians 3.11. We're not going to get through these, I don't think. We'll try, though. I'm going through the boldness scriptures, so understand that there should be a boldness. So many people are approaching God with fear and worry and nervous and talking about how unworthy they are and confessing all their sins and just so, you know, people teach you. That, people tell you, you've got to cry for mercy if you sin. And that's why mm -hmm. we have so many miserable Christians, because they're being told that they have to cry about it. And he's saying boldness. Cry for mercy? He says boldly come and get it. Right? Mm -hmm. It's different. It's not the Bible don't teach that. They do. Ephesians 3, 11 through 12. Mm -hmm. You ready? Yep. Yeah. According to the eternal purpose which he proposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by faith in him. Boldness, access, total confidence. That's pretty powerful words. It is. Yeah. In our approach to God. Right. By faith. You need to put your faith in this, in, in your, your ability to access God with boldness and confidence. You need to put your faith in that. That's what it says. Mm -hmm. Come on. Right. Okay, let's go to 1 Corinthians 2.12. Now we're going with the freely verses. We went through the boldness. Mm -hmm. Okay? These are promises. God tells you, hey, Dylan, you can approach me boldly. Amen. Okay? Because you're Amen. approaching a throne of grace, not judgment. Dylan, I want you to be able to come boldly into the holiest place. Okay? It's like approaching or coming into the pre president's office. Okay? You can just go right in, Dylan. You don't have to be nervous. You know, it's, you, right, right, you, right. You, you, yeah. there's a red carpet for you to come into the Oval Office in, in the White House. Okay, a red carpet treatment because of the blood of Jesus, you're able to go into the holiest place through the blood. Amen. Right? Come Amen. on. That's right. He's, that's what he's saying. These are promises. These are promises of God. He says he promises, this is, he's, he's inviting you to come this way. Verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that God, that have been freely given to us by God. Right? Right. That's like saying we, that we might know that we're getting everything free. Mm -hmm. Everything is free. I'm going to prove that to you in a minute. Everything you're getting from God is free. And he wants, he's got the Holy Spirit so you can know that. I'm going to prove it to you. I prove a scripture. Go to Romans chapter 3. <laughs> this is a great train of thought, isn't it? Yep. Three twenty-three. All right. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Is that you, Dylan? Do you sin and fall short of the glory of God? Yes. Yes, we do. But Christ in you is your hope of glory, right? Right, right. Okay. Right, right. Yeah. So, we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Freely justified by grace. Freely. There's that word freely again. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, you're freely justified by grace. That means you are declared not guilty before God. No Amen. charges. Amen. It says in Romans chapter 8 that he will not bring a charge against his elect. He will not bring a charge against you, Dylan. No Amen. charges are coming from God. The devil wants to put you under condemnation. There's no condemnation for you in Christ. Amen. Okay, don't listen to the devil. Listen, don't listen to those naysayers, those legalists. They will put you under condemnation every time. Mm -hmm. Don't go there. Right, right, right. Listen to the Holy Spirit. He says that what you're getting is free. Mm -hmm. Right? We just yeah. read that. Romans, what did I say? Romans uh, 8.32. Romans 8.32. We're looking at the freely verses. Okay. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? What did I say earlier that the Holy Spirit is there confirming within our spirit? That, uh, uh, no, the Holy Spirit is there 
uh, we have not received the spirit of the, of the world, world but, but, spirit, from God. The, but the spirit who is of God that we might know the things that God has freely giving us. And then I made the statement that everything is free. The Holy Spirit is there telling you that. And I told you I'm going to prove that. Well, this proves that. It says that if he died for us, won't he certainly freely give us all things? Mm -hmm. Everything is free. Mm -hmm. And if you're listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit, he's telling you that. We mm -hmm. just read that in 1 Corinthians uh, 2.12, that the Holy Spirit is telling you that these things are free. Right? Mm -hmm. Heavy. Wow. Okay, let's get through these. Go to John. These are all in John, so you should be fast. Okay. John chapter 11. Okay. See, John just nails it. John just goes with believer and unbeliever, and it tells you what you're going to get because you're a believer. Amen. He just nails it. The John, uh, John, Gospel of John is di different from the other Gospels. Those other Gospels are the synoptic Gospels, uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And then the Gospel of John is not synoptic because it's not like those. It's different in the fact that he just goes strictly believer and unbeliever, mm -hmm. right? Right. Uh, which is the Gospel, right? Right. John 11. Those other verses hammer away at your legal. It, 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 there's legalism in there. He's dealing with the law, right? Right. Okay, John 11, 25, 26. Okay. Uh, what did I say? 25 through 26, right? Yeah. Here you go. Okay. He's talking to Martha. Okay, he's, he's, he's about to raise Lazarus from the dead. And he's having a conversation with Martha. And, he's, and he's, Mar he says to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? He's saying you're never going to die. I love using this verse for the people that are in the senior center. Oh, that's very good. That's very it's good. really good. Because Be they're, they're, they're afraid of the process of dying. They're on their last licks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're not looking forward to dying. No, of course not. You know, yeah. and to hear that God, Jesus, this is a promise. We're looking at the promises of God. Mm -hmm. This is a promise. Luke, you're never going to die. Wow. Do you believe this? Wow. That's it's, good. it's a matter of faith. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that you have eternal life? He says in 1 John, he says, I write this so you can know you have eternal life. That means you're never going to die. Amen. Right? Amen. That's good. Yeah. It's heavy. Yep. Okay, John 5, 24. This is easy. We can do these real fast because we're they're all in John 5, 24. Okay. Okay. Most assuredly, he's saying most confidently, I want you to know this, okay, with all confidence. I, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes, this, this is Jesus speaking. Mm -hmm. Okay, most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life. Right? You're never going to die, Dylan. You have everlasting life. You're never going to die. Amen. Has everlasting life and shall not come in to judgment. Dylan, there's no judgment. Amen. What did we read earlier? You can have boldness in any day of judgment. Right? Mm -hmm. He said earlier that you, you can come, uh, 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 you can have boldness to, uh, uh, to approach the, 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 throne of, the throne of grace. The throne of grace. Right? Yeah. Right? Because right. it's not a throne of judgment. Right. He says it's not judgment. Mm -hmm. He who believes that the Father, he who he, he who hears my word and believes in Him who sent me, has everlasting not, life, shall not come into judgment. But you have already passed from death and life. You're already in the door. Like He said, you will never die. Mm -hmm. You've already passed from death into life. You're never gonna die. He told Martha. Amen. You've already passed from death into life. You're already in the door. Amen. Right? Yeah. He's preserving you blameless. He is sustaining you. Yeah, by you're the, saved the to the uttermost. Right, right. <laughs> it's good to get these locked in. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I do, and that's why I enjoy. That's why I, I, I the joy of the Lord is my strength. Right, John six thirty seven. Now Jesus said, "Nobody can come to me unless the Father first send them to drop." Nobody can come to me until the Father first draws them to me, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So did you, were you drawn to, the, to Jesus? Yes, I was. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, watch this. Verse 37, all that the Father gives me will come to me. 
and the one who comes to me, I will no means cast out. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. Verse 39. So he won't cast you out. Right? He's, this is a promise. The promise. We're looking at the promises of God. He says, no way. Once you come to me, I will no way cast you out. Right? Right. Verse 39. And this is the will of the Father who sent me, that all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise him up on the last day. Okay? He's not losing you. Amen. This is a promise that he will raise you up in the last day. Right? Mm -hmm. And this is a promise from Jesus saying, I won't lose you. People are worried about losing your salvation. That, the reason you think you could lose your salvation is because you're putting it on yourself. Right, putting it on he you. says, yeah. I won't lose you. You won't lose your salvation if you're putting it on him. Mm -hmm. You know, so let him have it. He, what do we read? He sustains you. He preserves you blameless. You are a partaker of his divine nature. You are saved to the uttermost. He's not going to lose you. The Bible says you're bought for a price. You're not even your own. Mm -hmm. He owns you. He took over. He says, well, now that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, you're bought for a price. You're not even your own. He takes ownership, and he will not cast you out. In a minute, we're going to see that he won't. nobody can snatch you out. You know, we got to cut this short. So we'll just finish with that. We'll just say nobody can snatch you out. Mm -hmm. I'll just, we don't have to go there. Mm -hmm. We'll just look at these, okay? okay. Uh, no one, he says no one can cast you out. He won't lose you. He says that... Um, uh, no one, uh, no one can snatch you out. I, I left. I missed that one. Oh, okay, you. Will, Jesus said, "When I send the Holy Spirit, He will abide with you forever." Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So He's not. Holy Spirit's not going anywhere. He's your assurance. The Bible says you're sealed by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. The Bible says you're, He's your seal. He's your guarantee of your inheritance. Dude, He abides. He's sticking with you forever. Amen. You're sealed in Him. Right. Amen. He's, he's okay. Revelations. Uh, 12.11 says, we overcome by the blood and the word of our testimony. Okay? Mm -hmm. 1 John 5.11-13 through 13 says what our testimony is. This is our testimony. What? Our testimony is that, uh, that we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That we, this is our testimony. Yeah. That we have eternal life yeah, and, and this life is in, in the, the Son. Son. That's our testimony. Yeah. So he says that we overcome by the blood, of the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Oh, yeah. Well, if we occur by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, what's the word? What's our testimony? That I have eternal life, and, and this life, life is, is in the Son. That's good. That's, That's good. my testimony. That's how I overcome. I gotta be confident of this, and trust in this, right? Be confident in the blood of Jesus. We overcome by the blood of Jesus, mm -hmm. and and be confident of my testimony. My testimony is that I I have eternal life. There it is, right? Mm -hmm. And we'll, okay, and I guess that's it. We can finish with the we'll finish with First Peter. One, three through five. Because this is what's important, is because I started with him saying that he sustains us. Mm -hmm. Right? right? Hebrews 1, 3, that we are, he is, he, Jesus sustains all things. Mm -hmm. And that includes me, being that I'm a new creature. It's right. easy to understand. He, if he created me, then he can sustain me. Amen. Right? Amen. Yeah. So, uh, 1 Peter uh, three through, 1, 3 through 5 says this. Mm -hmm. This confirms that he sustains you, okay? He says that, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy, he has begotten us again to a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, right? Yeah. Jesus said you've already passed from death and life. You've got a reservation. You're going to sit in it. Who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation. Who are kept by the power of God. Not our own power. You know, keep yourself. Just like you don't lose, you can't lose your salvation because he won't lose you. Here, you don't keep yourself. He says you are kept by the power of God. Amen. Just like you don't sustain your relationship with God. He, all things are sustained by him. Oh my gosh, this is a good study. This is powerful. This Amen. is the truth. And here, I'm going to put this card up here again so you could look at it if you should choose to. If you want to stop this teaching, you want to look at these scriptures, they're all there. You can stop this and you look at these for yourself. This is pretty amazing. You okay? Father God, we thank you, Lord. We said that prayer at the beginning, that we receive you. In receiving you, we receive the Holy Spirit, and, and we are saved. We prayed about that at the very beginning of the class, and that's who we are. That's what we have. That's your work. This is the work of God. We are your workmanship, created in Christ. 
yes, unto good works, that even that you prepared in advance. So, Father God, we just pray that we continue to be attentive to your Holy Spirit, that we drown out the voice of any demonic element in our life, that we might be continue to keep one foot forward. You know, like Paul said, this one thing I do, I forget what it's behind, I press on toward the goal. So we just, that's us, Lord. We just keep moving forward, okay? We don't get stuck in the past, stuck in our, our mistakes. We, sh we don't even, your word says in Hebrews chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 10, that we shouldn't even have a consciousness of sin. So we don't let sin weigh on our conscience. We let Savior consume us, Father God. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Amen.